who in the service of witness to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the life of Susan Marie Robinson, called into this world on July 2nd, 1955, and called to her heavenly home on June 7th, 2023. We join in singing the hymn of comfort, Amazing Grace.
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. And we hear from Jesus, his heart and his lips himself, in John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of our Lord. In response, we join in singing on eagle's wings as our Lord lifts us up with his strength. In 727, the words are also on the screen. <laughs>
the family of God, grace, mercy, and peace be to you. From Jesus Christ, the risen one. Amen. Do you remember the long time advertising model for Mutual of Omaha? Mutual of Omaha for its people. For its people you can count on. Remember that? I'm sure with 25 years of working for Mutual of Omaha, Sue heard that a lot. Even though they changed the model somewhat recently, we, as we look at Sue and her life, a person who could be counted on, and a person who counted on others. Working in the world of insurance and banking, you need people to count on. And Sue, that one who gave her eternal insurance that she didn't have to pay for. Jesus paid for her insurance policy that is eternal and was recently claimed in full. And she counted on her person, her Savior, Jesus. You could count on Sue. Your sister said she was quite motherly. No offense to you, Norma. You are always and still are their mother. But Sue, as the oldest, took care of them as you taught her. And as they looked up to her. You better call when you get home. I want to make sure you're safe. Well, now Sue's in heaven. She's eternally safe. She's not expecting you to call her. You're not expecting her to call you that she's safely home. You know where she is. And yet, Sue's waiting for all of you to catch up with her. As Jesus someday will call us home also. Either in death or when he returns. Whichever is first. Because he is the person to be counted on. Just as you counted on Sue and others counted on Sue. And we all count on Jesus. It's all because you count to the Lord. He knows all the hairs that are on your heads. He knows you all by name. He knows how many days are our number. So when our number is up, he's right there with us. I understand Sue loved bingo. A lot of numbers being called out. We could say that her scorecard had all the numbers filled, but her number got called by Jesus. And yes, she's victorious, but not gloating over everyone else whose boards weren't covered yet. But encouraging us on now from the perspective of heaven. Keep listening to the Lord for when he calls you by name and says your earthly number's up, the number of days you live on this earth. And then the days that are not counted anymore in heaven, eternal. So as we hear again those words of Peter's letter, to believers scattered across the earth and to us today also as we say our earthly farewells, our see you later to Sue. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We stand and sit today staring at a casket. Later, we'll see another grave. It doesn't stop the fact that Jesus is risen. And someday he will empty out every grave across this entire earth, including those that perish at sea. Anywhere else on this earth, he will open up every grave and say, Rise. 
because Jesus is the Lord over death, the Lord over the devil, and the Lord over sin. And that's why Sue trusted Jesus. Because he gave her a new birth into that living hope when she was baptized July 19, 1955, at Trinity Lutheran Church in Scribner. God the Father said, Sue, you're now my child. Through your big brother, Jesus Christ. And I will comfort and counsel you through my Holy Spirit all the days of your life. Yes, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He also reminds us this inheritance, this eternal insurance policy that never perishes, never spoils, never fades, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that's ready to be revealed in the last time. Yes, God hasn't ready to be revealed. He's still being patient for those who don't believe that Jesus is their Savior and Lord. Still being patient. For that eternal insurance policy that Christ paid for and grants to us as the beneficiaries. And in this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. But so have trials. Did Sue have sufferings of grief over her life? Yes, she did. The loss of her spouse, Earl. The loss of her dad, Norm. And especially this last year plus with her cancer. Yes, she had good days. And yes, she had some not some good days. But that didn't stop her trust in her Savior, Jesus Christ. She trusted that cancer is a greater than the resurrection. There are a lot of things that, yes, we look at cancer and other diseases that they can do. But our Lord says, let's turn it around. Remember what they can't do. Cancer can't stop the sun from shining. Cancer can't stop the Son of God shining evil. And cancer cannot and will not stop the resurrection. Or any other trial or trouble that you suffer. This side of heaven. Yes. Why do those happen? So that your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. And Sue had Jesus Christ revealed in all of his fullness when she breathed her earthly last. After her momentary troubles and trials and sufferings and grief. Because she trusted Jesus. She relied on his relief from her pain in her body, mind, and soul. Even though there were drugs for pain relief, there's many times that she said, I don't want those. But she relied on her Savior Jesus with his comfort, with his power, with his relief, with his love. And yes, her faith was refined and purified by Christ. And she trusted in her Savior Jesus all the way to the end. And her faith did not perish. It was refined. And now she sees Jesus in all of his glory. On earth, I understand so also like to go camping. Get away from the busyness of the rest of life and enjoy God's creation. Jesus also came to earth to camp out. But he didn't do it to get away from his throne in heaven. He came to bring Sue and you and me and all others home with him. Yes, camping remains for a time, but he's still got to go home. Jesus camped out on this earth for a little time as the first 
Her chapter of John's Gospel tells us, The Word became flesh and camped out with us for a while. And we have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only, full of mercy, grace, and truth. And He gives you grace upon grace as you mourn, as you mourn with hope. Those times of camping, the time to relax, while Sue's relaxing now, but it's not a camping trip, in the temporary tent, it's her permanent home. Remember those words from the Gospel of John where Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Jesus came for Sue, and he's going to come for you. But until he comes for you and for me, he says, go share this good news with those who don't have this hope, who don't have the same faith that Sue would you have. But take away their anxieties. Their anxieties about how they'll get through life. And share Jesus with them. Do we still have anxiety in this life? Yes, we do. Sue did. We do. But Jesus came to be the answer for our anxieties. Do you recall the anxiety of Thomas? After hearing those words of Jesus, Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? But Jesus didn't leave Thomas in his anxiety. He said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's why Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me, the way, the truth, and your life. And whenever anxiety tries to come up on this earth to trouble your heart and trouble your soul, remember the persons you can count on, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The other comforter, the other counselor is who Jesus calls the Spirit. The Spirit who calls you to faith and calls you to faith. The one who reassures us that the resurrection is real. So as... God prepares us. While He still refines our faith each and every day, looking forward to the day when we join Sue and all the others who have gone before us in faith. With Jesus, you can count. As well as the persons of the Father and the Holy Spirit. And then, as members of His family, the church, we don't sell the insurance policy. But we have the privilege of telling people throughout this world the eternal insurance policy has been paid for by Jesus. And it's available to you and for all, all for whom Jesus died. And one final remembrance. Your sister said that she always wanted to teach you the next. Maybe you needled her, but she didn't. Just remember, God has knit you together in your mother's womb. He knit Sue together in her mother's womb. And he has knit us all into that family of God our Father. Even though Satan would try to unravel everything, Jesus puts us all together. And so as we think about those things that Sue loved, bingo, yeah, her number got called. Called by Christ in victory. The number of her days was up. And while we continue to wait for our number to be called, when we shall join the number that is already in heaven, God says you already have the victory. And while you camp out on this earth a little longer, 
Remember, there is a home that Jesus is preparing for you that's permanent. And he's paid for the insurance policy. And he gives it to you. So as the Lord comforts you in your grief, he comforts you with his hope, with his love. And yes, it's Jesus you can count on. In that same name of Jesus, amen. And the peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord who lives. Amen. Will you now please stand with me as we join together in prayer? Let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Lord, draw near to those of us who mourn for Susan, and dry the tears of those who weep. Yes, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your fatherly care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Yes, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Yes, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the promises of Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Yes, Lord. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death he destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We praise Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction, the good word of our Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated, we join in singing, that him that's a reminder, I'm but a stranger here, Heaven is my home.
The following luncheon will be the burial of the Lair Cemetery for those who are able to go to the cemetery in Lair and say those earthly farewells. Peace be with you.